Yo, what's going on guys? DJ Hess here, CollectiveKicks.com. Wanted to bring you guys this week's Top 5 Tuesday video. And this one is going to be Top 5 Nike Models of All Time. So this one is definitely subject to opinion. This is just my opinion. If you guys have a different Top 5 that you guys believe in, please leave that in the comment section. Also, if you have future suggestions for Top 5 Tuesday videos, please leave them in the comment section as well. This video is actually a comment that was left from a video that I posted last week. So shout out to you guys that left those comments. Appreciate you guys also for hitting the thumbs up button when you guys do that. We're really, really close to 200,000 subscribers, so subscribe if you're new to the channel. Get on your, your wife's account or your girlfriend's account and subscribe to the channel as well if you guys want. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into it. The Top 5 Nike Models of All Time in my opinion. All right, so we have a couple runner-ups that I wanted to cover first, and first up to bat, we have the Nike Air Presto, released in 2000. These are very unique at the time because they came out with interesting sizing. This is like a small, medium, large, extra large sizing run. Kind of hard to determine which was your size until you tried them on, but it was kind of like the t-shirt ideal for uh, sizing on sneakers. Didn't really matter if they fit perfectly though because if you got a, a small or a medium, they were a little bit loose in the toe box area. It's kind of like the modern day Roshi run, but from the year 2000. So definitely a, a runner up in my opinion. All right, so moving on, another runner up, the Trainer SC. These things, Bono's, if you guys don't know this colorway, super dope, like original colorway from back in the day. 1990 to be exact, Bo Jackson, baseball and football player and I mean it was just it was just a revolutionary shoe also I just loved the straps that they had on on it's kind of the utility straps along the sides I thought it was super fresh how they made those in fact I remember having a knockoff pair of these that were like $20 from Payless hated them but I loved the inspiration because I thought Bo was just like just such a phenomenal athlete so that is another runner-up right here and my last runner-up Nike Foam Posit 1 I think this is definitely a revolutionary shoe it is released in 1997 Penny Hardaway like sponsored the shoe pretty much back in the day, but Mike Bibby was the first one to actually rock the shoe in college. Retail price on these from 1997 were $180. So people complain about uh, LeBron prices and Kobe prices and everything else. These were $180 in 1997. So that's the way the market's been. It's been up and down, but this is a phenomenal shoe. Still one of my favorites. All right, guys, so just a quick note. There are no Nike Air Jordans in this countdown. I did not want to include any Jordans in the Nike countdown because Frankly, they would dominate the top five, or at least three of the five, I think, would probably be Jordans. If you want to see a top five Jordan models of all time, leave a comment for that video, and I'll consider doing that in the future. But let's go ahead and get into the top five. All right, guys, so the five spot on the countdown goes to the Hirachi Run, and this is a shoe that was actually designed by Tinker Hatfield in 1992, and it was very unique because of the neoprene upper as well as kind of that sock-like hugging collar with the neoprene. And then also this was inspired after a Mexican sandal. So kind of interesting that I didn't know while I was researching this video. Number five spot. All right, so the four spot goes to the Nike Air Max 90. I absolutely love this shoe. I personally think this is an essential that you should have if you are a sneaker collector. This is one that you should have at least one colorway of an Air Max 90 just because it's such a, a popular shoe and just a classic model. Released in 1990. And it was a follow-up to the Air Max 1, which was the first Air Max with the visible uh, bubble on the air unit. All right, guys. So the three spot goes to the Nike Dunk. I think this is a phenomenal shoe. Definitely a staple in my collection. And it's kind of one that has a rich history. So it actually released in 1986. And oddly enough, it was a play on of the Air Jordan 1's popularity. So in 86, there was a team of designers that designed the Nike Dunk. And then they actually promoted them to college teams and wanted them to uh, wear them as their college hoop shoes. And so that's kind of how the Nike Dunk sort of happened. And then later, many, many years later, they were revived as a Nike SB skateboarding shoe. And this is like the Supreme version of the Nike SB uh, right here. So obviously the Nike SB line has been amazing because they've just done so much with the line and really transformed the shoe into like so many different colorways, so many different stories. It's really, really cool how they've continued to do that. So definitely a strong contender, number three spot. All right, so moving on, the number two spot in this countdown goes to the Nike Air Force One. Uptowns, downtowns, whatever you wanna call them, white on whites are kind of a must have for sneakerheads in like low tops, medium, or high tops. But this shoe actually released in 1982, and it was the first Nike basketball shoe to have the Nike Air inside of the shoe, which is a pretty cool feat because it was uh, just something new and, and revolutionary at the time. Bruce Kilgore was the designer of the uh, the Air Force One, and you can see the Nike Air on the back of the shoes. All right, so moving on to the number one spot, 
In my opinion, it goes to this year right here, the Nike Air Max 1. This released in 1987, was designed by Tinker Hatfield, and was the very first pair of Nike Airs to have the, the visible air unit window in the midsole. And that was just a revolutionary moment, I think, for Nike to be able to have that window. It opened the door for Nike to really create a ton of awesome things and to make people feel like they were walking on air, literally and visibly, as you can see with the air unit. So it was inspired by the Pompidou, which is a building in Paris, France, that Tinker Hatfield went and visited. And I guess that he drew the inspiration for the Air Max 1 from that. But this is the number one spot because of that and the visible air of the shoe and still relevant in today's sneakers that we see that are being released. And uh, I don't know, I think that this, this shoe really pretty much changed history with sneakers and footwear as we know it. So this has been my top five. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. If you guys again disagree with my top five that I listed, then for sure just leave a comment let me know which ones I missed because there's so many to choose from. I'm sure I overlooked some amazing sneakers that are on the market that, uh, that probably deserved a top, top five spot as well. So it was really hard to narrow down a top five. I had to really think about what are like the top models for Nike uh, through the la last handful of decades. So anyway, that's all we have for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thank you again for watching. And if you guys want to see the playlist in the description, check out my other top five Tuesday videos. Also, if you guys missed it, I surprised the wife with a brand new car this week. You got, I caught a reaction in the video. It was really fun. Check out that video. And I had some other unboxing um, videos and other things. So check out the channel as I post every single day. Appreciate you guys. Catch you guys with some more videos soon. Peace, guys.